Oh, we're on. Hey, good afternoon and welcome to Noonday Moments with God. I'm your co-host, Harold Dean Trulier. And I'm Brenda Medley, your host. <sighs> you ready to pray? Uh, I am. We're going to need prayer today. We are? Yeah. <laughs> we need prayer every day. I know. More some days than others, though. I okay. Agree. Okay. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you are love. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have commanded us that we should love one another as we love ourselves. And Lord, as we begin to think about what that looks like, how do we love one another? How do we get along with each other? How do we engage one another? How do we talk to one another? We need your help. And Lord, so today our, our ears are open to hear what the Spirit of God will say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, you kind of heard in the prayer, although she wasn't talking to you, but you kind of heard in the prayer kind of where we're going. Um, you know, we get a lot of comments, and please feel free to comment in the chat line when, we, when we're talking, and uh, we'll try to answer some of them. And... We get a lot of comments, though, when we're talking to our friends who've known us for years. And they, they, they talk as much about the two of us on camera as they do the content. In fact, sometimes, sometimes more. more, right? You know, oh, you all look so good together. You all have chemistry. Oh, the Lord put you together. I, you know, all that, that stuff, you know. You look so happy, you know. I wish I could be like you. And, and <laughs> we sit there and say, if you only knew how much work goes into this, right? I mean, it's, I mean, this it's not, it's not magic. No, it by no means. No, is magic. Mm -mm, you know. In fact, I was mad at him today, and I said, "I'm mad, man." Yeah, she did, and I just mad. sat there and said, "She'll get over it." And I did. It took me what? I don't know. I didn't have y'all no timer. Maybe ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> if I sit there and time you, then I start get, then I start stewing. Right. Oh yeah, we don't want that. Mm -mm, no, because I'm, I I can stew with the best of them, right? <laughs> For days. For days, I can hold a grudge. And I can't. I I I have to let it go. I just I can't. Sometimes you let go of stuff too quickly. We ain't finished talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, she'll let go of something. Come on, I call that resolution. <laughs> <laughs> she did today. She walked out. She said, I'll, I'll take care of it. Walked out. I'm sitting there saying, hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Come back here, you know. So <laughs> there's work, folks. There's work. And, 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 there's, and there's God. And so, you know, we thought that maybe the thing we ought to do is talk some about relationships, not just husband and wife or, you know, we're engaged to be married in, in March. Um, you know, but we have families. We have, you know, she brings a family. I bring a family. We have to relate to our own families, each other's families. She's pastoring a church. I've got, um, you know, I'm I'm learning her church folk. I teach. I have uh, students. They're adult students, right? I have to get along with them. I have colleagues. Um, you know, and I put. In the in the in the uh, little subtitle for today, can we all get along? No, <laughs> not without the help of God and without some work on our own selves, right? So true. It's so true. It just just, just doesn't happen. And I think that's the biggest part. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to work on ourselves. I think one of the the biggest problems with relationships are mm, probably selfishness. Mm. You know, we want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, and it's my way or the highway. Yeah, and sometimes you don't even know you're thinking that way. You know, people, you know, who get together at our age, right, we're kind of set in our ways. You know, she's... Um, Older than you, so... I wasn't going to say that. Yeah, yes, she you is. Were. That's right. I know she looks better, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> I got my drip clothes on today. My students said, Doc, you got drips. So I got my, I put my drip clothes on today so I could look a little, you know, but what it, part of the thing, what it means is that we've been through a lot of stuff yeah. and we've developed certain kinds of patterns of interaction with other people that may not necessarily be compatible with the other person. And so 
I can say, look, this is who I am, you know, take it or leave it. Or we can begin to say, if I'm really loving you, right? You know, see, yeah, Mihia's watching and she says, you all look like you're in love. And we are in love. Mm -hmm. But there are times when being in love just ain't enough, right? Yeah. You know, but, but I'm glad that it shows. I'm glad that, that because we want people to see the love of God in, in us. Amen. And we don't want it to be confused with the kind of love that they sing about on the radio and you yeah. know it's, it's agape versus eros mm -hmm. you know we have agape love you know and we have philios love the love of, of of friendship and we got a little bit of eros going on you know but um it's sanctified eros okay so for now <laughs> i just have to do it i know i know but the work that goes into it is something you don't want to lose sight of, right? Yeah. And um, and so that's kind of where we're, where we're going to be going, you know. Um, we talk about patience. We talk about love. We talk about understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think there are two things that are true. One is that when we first met, we made a decision. Each of us made a decision to get to know the other person. Yes. Because when you first met me, you uh -oh. kind of looked at me kind of deep. I did? Yeah. I did. I looked at him and I thought, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Rumpled. Shoveled. Oh, Lord. The dog got her two cent worth in. Mm, whatever. She also, um, she also said that I looked homeless. I did. I did. Well, she, I did. She wasn't too he far. He looked off. like he needed a lot of help. I did. Need and a I lot. didn't want to be the one to help. Well, <laughs> one of the reasons I, one of the reasons I looked homeless was that, you know, it wasn't too far in the in the in the distance when I actually was right and coming out of the, or too far in the past coming out of a. You know, halfway house um, after going through addiction uh, treatment for my alcoholism, and uh, my landlord had packed up my car and put everything in the back, and said, um, "Glad you made it through that, but you can't come back to my place." Um, the ex said, "You can't come back here." Um, so I went to a halfway house in Pennsylvania because I had nowhere to go, and I got kind of used to living out my car, and. Um, yeah, I still look like it. I never learned how to iron, so sometimes my clothes are wrinkled like this, this turtleneck. What? What is it? It's just... Oh, well. But, you know, I, I remembered something that... and Well, first of all, um, she, I could see that he had a good heart. And mm -hmm. that made a big difference for me. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think I told you that, that you had a good heart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, couldn't get with anything else, but he had a good heart. And I thought of something that an old lady told me. Her name was Mother Smith, and she was almost 100 years old. And she said to me one time, if a man has a good heart, and you can see he has a good heart, but maybe you don't like his clothes. She said, guess what? They got him. At, she was mentioning all these stores that have now closed. <laughs> Woodward and Lofrep. They have them. <laughs> what, good hearts? No, no, no. Oh. Clothes. Oh, clothes. Okay. Because sometimes, you know, we look at a person and we want them to look a certain way. And if they don't feel fit that bill, we're re ready to just X them out. Mm -hmm. And they miss the, the, the thing that's most important. And that's the good heart. Yeah, and I and what I saw in her was a woman of standard. Um, you know, I was I wanted a woman of standard, right? Um, I had. But been... did you think I took it too far? And I, and I wasn't taking it that far. Mm. It's just me. It's like, don't touch me. No, you can't hold my hand. I don't know you. <laughs> I was fine with that, right? She even tried to scare me off by by sending me a picture of her in a prayer shawl, right, all wrapped <laughs> up in white. <laughs> You know, I'm like, oh, good, standard. I I need that. That was, you know, but but see, we were able to come into that because of a certain level of self-awareness, right? 
working on myself and looking at what my strengths are, my weaknesses, uh, what I'm looking for another person, communication skills, right? You know, we're looking for all that because we realized, we both came into this realizing that relationships take work. Mm -hmm. And so the question is who you want to work with, right? And so, um, you know, I looked and I said, I see the standard, that's important. Communication, that's important. You need to be able to communicate. Um, vision for, you know, uh, for life, being self-aware, that's really critical, right? Um, now I have to be self-aware and I'm looking for somebody who's self-aware, someone who is willing to look at themselves and say, okay, I made a mistake. And you know, admit it. And admit it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, what's the guy's name on NCIS? Um, I don't know. Yes, you do. Um, Jethro. Oh, yeah, I do know. Rule number whatever. Never apologize. It's a sign of weakness. That's why Jethro ain't got nobody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously. Never apologize. It's a sign of weakness. You know, no, no. Take I don't a, agree with that. I don't either. You know. Take responsibility. Yeah. Take responsibility. Watch this. Take responsibility when you are wrong, but also... You can apo I apologize for things that I know is not my fault. Why would you do something like that? You know why? Because it hurt him. And so I'm sorry that what I did, what I said, how I reacted, the way things turned out, whatever it is, I apologize for that because I care about his feelings. Now, if I don't care about your feelings, I don't have anything to apologize for. Well, and, and, and see, I would use it, I would say it a little differently. Okay. Okay. When I say, I say, I'm sorry your feelings are hurt. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm not apologizing because I didn't do it, but I am, but the, the key thing is I want her to know that what, that I understand that what I did and what I said hurt her feelings and I care about her. So I'll say, I'm sorry your feelings are hurt. Yeah. Right? She says, I apologize. And I know what she means by that. And, and that's another important thing, understanding what each person means when mm -hmm. they say something, communication. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you can try when you're having communications problems is what is called empathic listening. Look it up, Google it, empathic listening. Empathic listening is when one person says something and then before the other person can respond, they have to say back to you what you said to make sure they got it right. And you know what? You try that. Nine times out of ten, what you say back to the person is not what they intended for you to hear. You know what? That's good because I want to give an example. I'll say, and, and most of the time women do, you know, men and women communicate differently. So if I say to him, wow, the trash needs to go out, what does that mean to you? It means the trash needs to go out. Exactly. Did you hear that? I said the trash you know, needs to go out. And I said, what does that mean to you? And he says, it means the trash need to go out. So what happens is a woman will get upset because I just asked him to dump the trash and he didn't do it. But did I ask you to dump the trash? No. In, in my mind as a man, no. But now that I've been around here a little bit, you know, I, I understand she's asking me to do that. Or actually, to be honest with you, since since I don't live here, you know, because we're not married yet, no ideas, right? Okay. When she says the you trash, yeah, well, no, when she says the trash needs to go out, I look for her grandson because <laughs> I know she wants one of them to take it out, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but that's how but women that's point. communicate. That's, yeah, it you is. know, we'll say the trash needs to go out, and then we get mad when he don't jump up and take out the trash because we never ask, "Will you take out the trash?" If, if you um, specifically ask for what you want rather than just make a statement and expect him to come to your conclusion, it's going to make, it's going to be better. Yeah. You know, per perfect example, another example, um, we had a, we had a, a, a misunderstanding last week when uh, she had said that she was going to make a certain financial transaction 
And then um, it came up that I hadn't made a certain, I mean, we were both going to make financial transactions. And it came up that she had done it and I hadn't. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? She said, well, I said, well, I was going to do it. I said, yeah, but you didn't tell me when you did it. And then um, she says, yeah, but when I say I'm going to do something, I do something. And then we had to work this out in terms of trust, in terms of when she says she's going to do something, do I really believe she's going to do it? Um, should She wants to be trusted. Shouldn't I allow that to happen, right? Um, you know, I'm, I'm the one who's, you know, um, saying, you know, I'm going to do something. I procrastinate. Am I projecting that on her? You know, all these questions are, are logic, are, are legitimate questions if you're going to be in a relationship. Can't we all get along? No. Not without the help of God and without some hard work, right? Because there's this little thing that came into the world called sin. Oh, I thought you were going to say foxes. Well, little foxes fought, swallow them. They don't spoil swallow the them. vine. They spoil the vine. Okay. Yeah. I wish they would swallow some vines. Okay. Right. But watch this. When sin came into the world in Genesis chapter 3, what was the first consequence? A strain in a human relationship. Mm -hmm. Right? Adam comes into, um, Adam's in the garden. Man's in the garden. God comes into the garden and says, um, you know, Adam, where art thou? And Adam's first thing is, <laughs> oh, that's right, you're on that side. I got to remember. The woman that you gave me, mm -hmm. right? He responds to God by blaming somebody else. And then the Eve says, the Eve, the woman says, you know, it was the snake. So immediately blame, mm -hmm. strain on relationship, right? And, 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 and we don't know what happens after. We know God made him some clothes, right? But I wonder, you know, after after the scene closes and, and the, we don't hear anything else until, you know, um, the, the little kids come, you know, I wonder if he was saying, oh, so was me. So was me. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know she did that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you going to blame me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. Y'all know how we are when, when, when you, you're... Because, see, that's the other problem. We see people like you looking at us, right? We're on camera, everything looks good, right? You see couples at church, everything looks good. You see um, people out on the job, oh, I wish I had what they had. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what Eve said to Adam after that episode. In fact, Adam better be happy he got some little Cain's and Abel's and Seth's, you know? <laughs> she might have closed the store, you know, because that's what women will do to you. They close the store, right? Y'all know we can turn in. Y'all know you're gonna get real deal when you turn in here, right? <laughs> the women will close store real quick, you know. So, you know, you don't. I'm, I'm helping you out, right? Because you look at the people in church, and like, oh, I wish I had what they had. You don't know. You don't but we know. do have a good relationship because we work. That well, day. yeah, we work very yeah. hard. We we, we we're in premarital counseling, right? And we're gonna stay in until. Uh, I'm a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we stay we we stay in there, and we're discovering new things. I got to I got to Okay, and today is my turn. I go by myself. We also go as individuals, and so he's getting ready to lay some stuff on me today. I know he is, right? He 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 talked to her about some tough stuff last week. I'm gonna get some tough stuff today. He made me mad. Yeah, you. <laughs> I, when I talked to you afterwards, you were sullen right <laughs> and i expect him to definitely come after me in fact after you told me some of the stuff he asked you i'm sitting there saying mm, okay yeah, come, on, <laughs> come on come on come on come on right um but these things need to be discussed absolutely. especially before you say i do very mm -hmm. often we don't ex discuss them and we expect the other person to know what we want to know who we are and just fall in line with that and mm -hmm. in fact, I know a couple who uh, never really, well, first of all, they never told the truth about um, their needs, their desires. Uh, they they just didn't. And so then after they got married and, and they started making demands on each other, you know, and one felt like, you know, well, I've always been like this and I, it was like this before you came. And so I'm certainly not going to change for you. 
But those were things that should have been discussed before you say I do. Mm -hmm. Because if it's that important to you, it's not going to change. And what's, it's going to just cause a lot of problems in the relationship. Right. And, and, and this is true whether you're talking about marriage or dating <clears throat> or sometimes in the family, right? Yeah. Um, you know, siblings who don't get along, parents who don't get along with siblings, uh, co-worker relationships. Um, I have to be willing to examine my own attitude whenever there's conflict. We talked, we did a whole series on conflict earlier, but to examine my own attitude and not be so quick to blame other people. And um, if you, you knew I was like this. Well, like what? What do you like? Is it godly? Well, it's, I, you know, I like baseball. Ain't nothing sinful about that. It might be. Maybe you like baseball too much. <laughs> you know, um, maybe maybe you worship baseball, right? Um, you having too much. Um, you, you you got baseball stuff all over your house. Um, you 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 don't go to church, or you, you know you get mad because church goes too long because the game's coming on, right? I had never seen somebody say, oh, man, the football game's too long, man. I, I got to go to church. Well, that's a matter of love. That means you love the game more than you love God. Yeah. So, did I say that? Mm, I did. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I wish the Redskins, that's what she was on their team, team's name, the Commanders, right? Uh, man, I wish the Commanders would hurry up and finish this game so I could get to church. You'll never hear that, mm -mm. right? <laughs> but you do hear, man, church, the game is starting that's enough. Bring it on home. You about to close? Close, man. Mm -hmm. Or as Broderick mm -hmm. Crawford, as Broderick, uh, Broderick Crawford, as Broderick Rice likes to say, why don't you be like Pharaoh and let God's people go? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so lots of times the, the, the things that we love, the things that we're attached to, right, they can get in the way of, of relationships because we're not self-aware. Yes. Right? And Paul tells Christians, right? Paul tells Christians, before you come to the communion table, let a man, let a woman examine himself. Self-examination is always in order, right? One of the things I love about this woman is that she's always in a state of self-examination always looking at herself in light of how God sees her and where are there areas to grow. Mm -hmm. I try to do that myself. I try to surround myself with friends who are doing the same thing. I don't need a friend who's going to co-sign my foolishness. I want a friend who's committed to my growth and willing to let me, you always talk about speaking to someone's life, willing to let me speak into their life in terms of growth as well. That's part of relationships. If it's just somebody that you sit around and have fun with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's my boy. That's my boy. Where they all both get in trouble. See whose boy that is, mm -hmm. right? And and you know what? There there's a scripture in the Bible that says every man's <clears throat> every man's ways are right in his, his own, own eyes. eyes. And so a lot of times we see what we are doing is right, even when it's not right. It's right to me. It feels good. It's what I want. You know, I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to do this because it's right. And so sometimes we need somebody who's going to say, no, that's that's not right. Mm -hmm. Just going to tell you the truth. Somebody that you can be accountable to that can tell you when you are wrong. And then you have a responsibility to listen to it, to not be angry and to examine it, to think about it. And to ask yourself, you know, um, I can remember when, if I was upset with him, the first thing I would do is say, I need to go for a walk. And I would get up and walk. That was my way of releasing stress. But, go ahead. Because I was raised in a culture of rejection and I have rejection issues. When she took her walk, I felt some kind of way. So she started amending that a little bit, and then I started recognizing that was something she needed to do. In fact, 
because of my rejection issues, my thing was when she took a walk, I didn't think she was coming back. Right? So I finally realized that when she walks, she will come back. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not in the same place I was when the first time she, she did, I'm taking a walk. Right? I'm not in the same place. I still don't like it, but I understand it. And I well, recognize. I don't do it anymore. It's because I haven't made you mad. That's not true. I was mad to death. Yeah, but you didn't take a walk. No, I just said I'm mad. Mm hmm. And sometimes that's all you need to do, just make it known. You know, and if you have the person with the right heart and you just say something simple, I think what I said was, I'm mad, man. That's all I that's all I said. And we were able to talk through it. You don't want to have somebody you gotta scream and holler and throw things and jump up and down and act crazy. That's true. I can't do it. I, I just can't. It's just not my personality. But back up, I wanna make something real clear here. We talked through it and then you said you were mad. Right. Right? And that's important, right? Because why is that important? Because when she said, I'm mad, I realized that was walk time. She's mm -hmm. not walking, but I'm what did the walk do? Well, no, no, wait, watch. Okay. The walk was, why, why did you take the walk? You needed space. Right. So after we had the conversation, after we talked it through, she was still angry. So that meant, what I've learned about her is that when she gets upset like that, she needs space. And when she needs space, it's not a rejection of me. In fact, if I think her needing space is rejected, a rejection of me, it means I'm self-centered because I'm interpreting your behavior as a evaluation and evaluation of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I've got to allow her to have some space, especially when she's angry. Mm -hmm. She's not going to walk, whatever. But I, I knew this after we finished and she said, I'm still mad, man. I'm mad, man. I knew <laughs> that my role at that moment was to. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he didn't throw any fire. He didn't throw gasoline on the fire. He didn't, well, you does it. None mm -hmm. of that. He just got quiet. And then I calmed down. And later on, you know what this man did? He came in the kitchen and he grabbed me and what did you do? Gave me a big hug. Oh, oh yeah, I did. I did. And I... it just made everything <laughs> go away. Remember when you were a little kid and you fell and you hurt yourself? And you would come and say, Oh, tell your mommy and you cry. <laughs> and she said, You want me to kiss it? And you say, Yeah. And she kissed it and it just seemed like it just that's what that hug did. Wow. I'm, I'm sorry. You said, remember you came in the kitchen? My first thought was, yeah, you were making that egg sandwich. It's stunk. <laughs> <laughs> egg sandwich. You know. <laughs> but but he is right. She looks so good. She looks so beautiful. You know, I could look past the egg sandwich and see her in her beauty. And just, I said, I, what I did was I need something. And she thought I was, you know. So you want some of this sandwich? I'm like, no. <laughs> Why people eat egg sandwiches? <laughs> but you know, but I still I wanted I wanted and I needed her to know. It's not that I needed the hug. I would like one, but I wanted her to know I'm you know, I'm okay and I still care and you can be mad and that's cool. Um it's really about it's really about having compassion. Right? Mm -hmm. We we think I, I wrote a thing today um, on Twitter. It said social justice advocates. For some of us, it's much easier to advocate for peace and justice in social policy than it is to practice that in our own lives. And so I feel a real call in my life today as a justice advocate, criminal justice reform person, social justice person, and who I run around the country saying we should have compassion on incarcerated people, I need to have compassion on her, right? When, when, I, when, when there's a misunderstanding or 
when she does something that I don't like, right? I can't have I can't talk about compassion for the murderer and not talk about compassion for her. That's where a lot of preachers screw up their mm -hmm. relationships. They'll preach compassion and forgiveness yeah. from the pulpit, but won't practice it at home. That's right. That's right. And then you love your church more than you love me. And you don't you you on a slope, dude. At that point, right? And y'all know what happens after that. Then you go f looking for love in all the wrong places, and uh, right? Yeah. When if we as the church helped people understand what relationships are all about, even, and again, yeah, marriage is the ultimate relationship, but also how do we get along with each other in the church? Amen. How do we find, you know, some churches, the relationships and the atmosphere is so toxic, you feel worse when you leave church, mm -hmm. when then, or you feel good because you're out of there, mm -hmm. right? Um, I remember talking to a woman saying, Whenever I go to those meetings, you're talking about a particular church. When I go to those meetings, I feel like I need to take a shower when I get home. Wow, that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And that's the church. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Right. So, <sighs> I'm grateful today that we're going to be able to talk about relationships. Today, we're just kind of generally rambling. Um, and we were really glad Jenny joined us and uh, Ramona Mejia, she joined us. And, and you guys are so encouraging, Kizzy and all, and, and the rest of you. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, we're going to continue talking about this tomorrow. We're going to begin to get into some specifics, communication specifics, um, specifics about um, how to increase in favor with humanity at work, with our kids, you know, little things like that. It's, it's, it's ordinary stuff in, in, in getting along in relationships that, um, see, how can I say it? I'll say it this way. The ch church leadership makes a certain assumption, in my judgment, that we need God for difficult things. We need to give show people how God helps us through difficult things. But we think that pretty much everything else you can handle on your own. No. But it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And little things that can get on your nerves and little things that you miss that eventually pile up mm -hmm. and become the big things that can destroy relationships, destroy fellowship, and destroy the intention that God has for us. God never intended for us to be by ourselves. Ooh, that's a good subject. We should talk about it We talk day. about that. Talk about, go back to Genesis and look at yeah. what God does in creation. Amen. So, anyway, it's been real. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Heaven smile upon you until tomorrow. Well, no. Actually, we want you to ha heaven to continue to smile upon you, not just till tomorrow. Y'all know what I meant. Y'all know what I meant. God bless.